excellent day wherever you are. You are blessed for life in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm happy that God has connected you to this broadcast. It's not by chance. It's for a divine purpose. And that purpose, in just a few moments, you discover it and be prepared by it. But before we go into the word today, let's just say a little word of prayer, shall we? Everlasting Father, thank you for a time like this that you have brought us to minister your word to this your divinely orchestrated child to be connected to us. Father, prosper this few moments we have together and let your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. God bless you. We're going to be talking about moving on to greater glory. And that is going to be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. We are all people of different levels of glory. And in life, God has level upon level upon level of glory. I'm praying that today, God is going to be moving you higher in the name of Jesus. We will take our reading from the book of Job chapter 8 verse 7. I will read from here. Job 8 7. Though the beginning was small, yet the latter end should greatly increase. Our God is not just the God of a good beginning. He is also the God of a better continuation and also the best ending. Though your beginning might be small, many people get discouraged when they have a small beginning in business, in academics, in intellect, in ministry. No, don't be discouraged. It has been written that it might be small, but your ending will be superb. And that will be your question in the name of Jesus Christ. Many times, many people have an issue in abiding in God while they are going through their developmental stages in life. Because in the metamorphosis of a butterfly, by the time you see the beginning and the end, you cannot even reconcile both together. That is why in the book of John chapter 5, 5 to 9, you keep on hearing God talking about abide. Abide. If you abide in me and I in you, you bring forth food. If you abide in me and I in you. But the issue is that many people don't love to abide. We live in the world of instant gratification. Having it now, now, now. If it is not now, then it must not be God. No. If God is the God of variety, He could choose to do something now, as He has done for people and He's still doing today. And sometimes we could choose to make it a process. And I've come to discover that things that are in process, they last longer. It does not mean that when God does something instantaneous, it will not last long. But it just for you to know that wherever you are, whether your own is instantaneous or it is in process, God is involved. Many people give up. Whenever they go through trials and tribulation in life, God has not promised us that we will not go through them. In fact, the book of 1 Peter chapter 14, 1 Peter 4, 12 to 13, sorry, 1 Peter 4, 12 to 13, I will quickly read it here, giving us the um, advanced knowledge that sometimes we will go through issues, but don't worry, all these issues that we go through, they help to make us better. They build character in us. They build strength in us. They build rigor in us so that we'll be able to storm, we'll be able to weather any storm in life. First Peter chapter 4, 12 to 13. Beloved, take it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which it should try you, as though some strange things happen unto you. But rejoice in as much as the apatheca of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. I decree into your life, regardless of whatever tribulation trial that you are going to, let your season of joy start today in the name of Jesus Christ. However, just as I said before, God can do something instantaneously, just like the blind man, Bartimaeus, in the book of Mark chapter 10. The Mark of that time from 46 to 51, you will read the account that Jesus Christ asked him what he wanted him to do. 
and he said he wanted to receive his sight, and Jesus Christ immediately opened his eye. That is what we call instantaneous. But there was another man that was blind in the book of Mark chapter 8, 22 to 25. Mark 8, 22 to 25. Jesus Christ took his hand and led him out of that particular town, still being blind, and after a while, he mixed the clay on the floor with spittle, and he put on the eyes. And he asked the man whether he could see. The man said that he could see partially. And he has to touch him again. Check out that. Jesus Christ was with the man already. And he was still going to be blind for a while. Because he was living. In, maybe I should even read it so that you can get the Mark chapter 8, 22 to 25. Mark 8, 22 to 25. And he comes to Bethsaida. And they bring a blind man unto him. And besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eye and put his hand upon him, he asked him if he saw all. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. After that, he put his hand again upon his eye and made him look up. And he was restored and saw every man clearly. Can you imagine that? Jesus Christ being with the person, yet the person was still continuing with the situation. Many people always think that the fact that God is in somebody's life means that the, the, every negative situation will just stop. No, sometimes it will continue. The continuation does not mean that it is going to... Delay is not denial. It, it left that environment Probably if he had wrought that miracle, that environment would still cripple him again. Just like the Chinese bamboo tree. Chinese bamboo tree, for years, about four years of plantation, it does not go beyond a particular level, but after a while, at, at, in just one season, it grows up to about 80 to 50 feet taller than the one that has been growing before it. I'm prophesying into your life, like Chinese bamboo tree, this is your season of great increase in the name of Jesus Christ. I remember when I wanted to start to minister, to preach, to evangelize, I just gave my life to Christ, and I was told that, ah, it's good to, minister, to preach in the world. Many times I tried to open my mouth, multiple was catching me on my mouth. <laughs> I could not open my mouth. I would enter the bus, I would go to the very back so that nobody would see my mouth. Yet I would not be able to go. But one day, I, I, I saw all the calling, and after so many bus stops that I passed, I just opened my mouth. Let somebody shout hallelujah. And some people encouraged me, they shouted hallelujah. As I started preaching, I did not know that my bus stop was the name. They called my bus stop. I was still a student that I didn't have money to just keep on going. I just had to get down. Even before finishing preaching, I felt like a fool that time. But I did not stop preaching. That is what I'm trying to do. Even when you are falling, in the course of your trying to make a way, get up again and move on. Each fall is strengthening you and making you wiser. And I'm prophesying into your life. Whatever area that you have gone down, you are going up again in the name of Jesus. Talking about Abraham now. We are talking about moving on to greater glory. Abraham, at the age of 100, God bless him with a child. And when you read that particular portion of the scripture, the angel visited him, the wife did not believe. By the end of the day, he believed. He received, the, Sarah received the strength to conceive. Then Sarah died. That promise that he brought forth by um, Sarah, which happened to be Isaac, it appeared as if, okay, God had promised him 25 years before. And a child came, and before that child, Ishmael came at 80, when he was 87. Then it was as if that was the end. But God was not true with him. Because God told him that he should come out in Genesis 15. Now, if you look at the stars of the sky, that don't, the children will be so much. Then two children should not be so much at the end of the day. Do you know that Abraham seemed married after Sarah died? He was around 137 years old. He married a lady called Ketura in the book of Genesis 25, 1 and 2. Maybe I should quickly read that. Genesis 25, 1 and 2. And Abraham brought forth 
about five more children at the extreme age when the body has been considered dead. But God is not through with you yet. I don't know what is dead in your life, but what God has promised you will come to pass in the name of Jesus. Let me just quickly read that Genesis 25 1 and 2. Then again, Abraham took a wife, and her name was Keturah, and she bare him Zimra, and Jokshan, and Midian, and Midian, and Mishbak, and Shua. Praise the Lord. Six children came at the time that Abraham had already given upon himself that he could not even perform. Meaning that God is not depend the promises of God is not dependent on the strength of man. But what God says he will do, he will do. And he has already said that this is your season of greater glory. So shall you experience in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to be telling my technical guy to help us to uh, feature a particular um, clip or musical from um, a guy, Israel and the new breed, with the title, Your Latter Shall Be Greater. And that is it's a prophetic song. I want you to soak in the lyrics and even the reading, because that is going to be your story. Regardless of what you have explained now, you have just gotten to your season of greater glory. Even if you have been blessed before, get set for greater blessing and God bless you. Let, and let's come back at the end of this musical and pray. Your ladder will be greater than your past. Best is yet to the come. best is yet to come, and your ladder will be greater. Your ladder will be greater. Your ladder will be greater than the rest. Tell somebody tonight, your ladder will be Tell them you will be blessed. You will be blessed more than you could ask. More than you could ask. Despite all that has all been done, has been done. The best is yet to the come. The best is yet to come. And your ladder will be greater. Your ladder will be greater. Say your ladder.
in this building and receive the word of the Lord. You may have come through some situations and circumstances. Look at me for one minute. How many of you know that the Bible declares that the end of a thing is better than the beginning of a thing? God knows the end from the beginning. And God promises that the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the glory of the former house. I just want to take a moment right here and minister to those of you that have been through something. And the enemy has lied to you and told you that the best is behind you. I've come to call the devil a lie and say that the best is in front of you. That your ladder will be greater. That you haven't seen anything yet. Your best days and your blessed days, they are ahead of you. That your problems don't equal your promises. The devil's no cannot compete with God's yes. Say the best is the yet. Best is yet to come. Say the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. Thank you. 